While many workers are exposed to electricity as part of their daily responsibilities, electrical hazards present a unique challenge in construction. As electricity is an unseen hazard, and many workers are unaware of the risks and hazards present in their workplace. In addition, due to the dangerous nature of electricity, most incidents resulting from electrical hazards can often be life-altering or fatal. It's important to understand and recognize the top risks and hazards involved with working with or around electricity and the proper techniques to mitigate and control these hazards. The most common causes of electrical incidents and injuries come from the following. Contact with overhead or buried power lines and other live parts. Lack of or improper ground fault protection. Grounding paths missing or discontinuous. Improper use of extension cords and equipment. Working on energized or hot electrical circuits. The main types of electrical injuries are burns, electrocution, which is always fatal, falls resulting from contact with electrical energy and electric shock. Overhead or buried power lines are especially dangerous to workers because they contain very high voltage and are typically uninsulated. Contact with these lines are typically fatal. The most common cause of contact with power lines comes from the use of equipment, including cranes, backhoes, metal ladders, raised rough terrain forklifts, aerial lifts, metal building material, concrete pump trucks, raised dump truck beds, and scaffolding. It's important as a worker to do a visual survey of the work area and look for any overhead power lines or buried power lines before starting work. Before digging, call 811 Miss Utility to help identify the exact location of underground utilities that will be marked with flags or painted marks. You must always assume that overhead power lines are energized, so you must maintain at least a 10 feet clearance at all times. Missing switch plates or receptacle covers around electrical outlets and missing covers on breaker boxes can lead to workers being exposed to live electrical parts and inadvertently making contact with it. So receptacle and switch covers must always be installed when there is live power to the outlets. Normal use of electrical equipment on construction sites causes wear and tear that can lead to exposed wires, damaged insulation, and short circuiting. Without proper GFCI protection, any of these conditions can lead to a ground fault sending electrical current through a worker's body, causing electrical burns, fires, explosion, shock, or electrocution. To avoid these hazards, use GFCI protection on 120 volt, 15 to 20 amp receptacles. Use double insulated or properly grounded tools and equipment and follow manufacturer's instructions on proper usage. And always inspect all equipment and tools before use and remove from service any tool with frayed, damaged cords, missing ground pins, and damaged or cracked tool pieces. Most electrical tools and equipment have safety features built into them by the manufacturer. However, if used in ways not intended by the manufacturer, operators of such equipment no longer rely on these features. Examples of misuse of equipment are using electrical cords or tools with worn or damaged insulation and exposed wires, using modified cords or tools that may be missing faceplates, ground pins, or insulation, fabricating extension cords with Romex wire, using junction boxes designed to be mounted with a power cord and placing them on the floor, using electrical equipment outdoors that is only designed for use indoors, and not using three-wire extension cords designed for hard or junior hard service typical for construction usage. It's important to only use tools and equipment approved to meet OSHA electrical standards and according to manufacturer specifications. Being exposed to energized live parts while working on or near them can be extremely dangerous. Never work on energized or hot electrical circuits until all power is shut off or de-energized and a lockout tagout system is in place, which protect workers from the dangers of the accidental or unexpected startup of electrical equipment. If the work can only be performed on live energized equipment, an electrical hazard analysis must be conducted 
and safety-related work practices outlined in National Fire Protection Association 70E must be followed. Following these practices will keep you working safely.